Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's Fatmata here from Traditionally Inspired Meaningful Art and today we have another belated Friday Sills. Let's dive right in. Okay, so welcome, and if you're new here, my name is Spot Mata, and I love all things sewing, creativity, and there's so much on this channel, so please have a gander, take a look at some of the other videos, and hopefully, if you like what you see, you will consider subscribing. Thank you also to Jen from Today in Jen Sewing Room for kicking off the hashtag Friday Sews, where we creatives and sewists in the community can get together a once a week to talk about what we've been up to in our sewing practice. So I am going to begin by sharing what I've made this week, what I have planned for the upcoming week, and then just more generally how life and me made me and all of that is kind of going at the very moment. Let's begin by talking about this new top. It is freshly made. I finished it last night and I am just thrilled. I picked up this fabric during my G Street Fabric President's Day sale um, haul and I fell in love with this print, but it was the wonkiest piece of fabric I had ever seen in my in my life <laughs> at any place to actually purchase it was cut into almost at every single angle i couldn't necessarily figure out where the selvage was for more than about half a yard at a time and they had this really huge diagonal cut going through one of the ends of it so needless to say i think anyone else who might have stumbled upon that would have sort of written it off as like that is garbage and i though could not get enough of this print. So let's take a look. It's this almost um, chartreuse green, not as yellowy, but uh, a really, really interesting sort of coloring. And it has these beautiful sort of floral um, flowers and the detailing all throughout. It is also a rayon jacquard. So it has this beautiful sort of lustrous sheen to it, in addition to the beautiful jacquard print all throughout. And I loved it. So when I saw that huge sort of diagonal, I immediately thought to myself, I could utilize that and make a pussy bow blouse. So it was always destined to be that. I did not have extremely high hopes for this make. I just needed it to be wearable. That was it. That was the standard for this make. Could I put it on my body? It was hard to try and place the pattern pieces. I had to be really strategic with that. I had to also try and find a grain line and finding a grain line on a rayon jacquard is really hard because as soon as you think you found it, the jacquard print that's woven into the fabric will sort of disrupt whatever thread you're trying to pull to kind of, um, you know, figure out where the grain is. Needless to say, there are many parts of this that I'm sure are not on grain. And yet I am able to wear it. I'm really pleased and I'm as happy as can be. I used a really big mashup of things. I wish that I could say like, this is the pattern I use for you to get a blouse like this. Let me tell you what I did, if it would be of a benefit to you, but I was, I, I was winging it the whole way through. So for the bodice, the real mock-up or initial sort of um, pattern I used was my Butterick B6664, which is honestly, now that I've hacked the view D, to include the neckline of view A, to have that sort of jewel neckline, but have just this really nice swing top sort of look, as you can see in the design lines. It's a very nice flowy blouse, no darts, and it just sort of hangs off the body, which I like, but I needed it to be a higher neckline for me, for the way that I would actually wear it. And I often feel like the arm side of this pattern, the butter pattern is really tight right up against my arm. And I like the arms of McCall's 9358, which I've also had in the sewing room that I've used recently. So I cut the initial sort of bodice out with the butter pattern as it is with the modification I made to the neckline. And then I took the front and back top pieces of the McCall's pattern, laid it over it, matching up the um, shoulder seams, and then cut off the excess to sort of widen the arm side. 
And then I used the sleeve pattern from the McCall's pattern because that is what would then fit into the newly created arm side. I hope that makes sense. I'll insert a clip that kind of explains a bit of the hacking process that I did as I was doing it and hopefully that will sort of explain it. But all in all, I'm so happy that I tried my best to actually utilize this fabric. I'm sure everything about this is off grain, but I don't care. I tested out that new skill that I was practicing on my kiddos clothes to make a placket. So I'm really proud of that. It's going to have a pussy bow blouse. So I just interfaced to stabilize the neckline. And because I didn't have enough fabric for the sleeves, I went ahead into my stash of those linens that I'm um that I have out in the sewing room geared up for the Zimmerman dress and pulled some colors from the fabrics that I had and did some um lines there. I do think I still need some more fabric so I plan to add a cuff. I'm really excited about how this is turning out. All in all, really excited that this is a wearable garment. Um, I'm just wearing it here with jeans and yeah, couldn't be happier. I could see this being like something that I wear with a nice skirt, something high waisted, but I'm just really excited. I needed this as sort of a palette cleanser of sorts. The first thing that I made this week was actually my culottes from Simplicity 1069. So here are my culottes that I made and I'm just so excited that this is no longer just fabric. It is a pair of wearable pants and it just makes me so happy. I used again Simplicity 1069 which as soon as I saw the cover of this I was like I think I'm gonna like this and I really really do. I made view B so the culottes and definitely have plans to make more maybe even this upcoming week. It seems like it could be a really simple easy breezy sew. I of course overcomplicated the whole business and it ended up taking me like three nights so after work and then the hours that I can actually sew once I put the kiddos to bed. Um, so over three nights. But I think that it would definitely be doable in much less time. I struggled because, as I mentioned previously, I wanted to line mine. The outer fabric that I used here is a lovely viscose fabric that I picked up last year from Mood Fabrics Online. And it just, for my comfort level... For my body shape, I do not feel comfortable wearing a uh, material as light as viscose, just one layer as light as it is for my bottom half, just by itself in a pair of pants. So I wanted to have a bit more structure on the inside. So I utilize this rayon to make the shorts. So basically I just made view C, the shorts version, and that's the length of them. So they're a bit uh, longer. So this probably stops at about my knee. And yeah, I just made it, it still has the same pleat detail. I inserted the invisible zip. That was something else that sort of took a little bit of mental gymnastics, just trying to make sure that I didn't accidentally sew the zipper in backwards when I was doing this. So it's really well made. I French seamed the viscose fabric and simply overlocked the rayon fabric. At the very bottom, because I didn't have enough of this fabric to do a deep sort of turnover for the hem, I ended up doing a facing at the hem so I could preserve as much length at the bottom of this as possible. I happened to have this cotton fabric in the sewing room from a previous make, so I just cut, um, you know the length of it to kind of fit and it worked really beautifully as a facing it also provides a bit of weight to the bottom of the pants because it's much heavier than the really drapey viscose it also does kind of contort the fabric in an awkward way i think i notice it more because i'm looking for it since i noticed it when i made it but i think after it washes and wears i'm hopeful that it will be fine. I just need to remember to kind of press it and make sure that the cotton doesn't shrink and then try and take the viscose with it. In the future, I probably would have been better off, let's say like using the same rayon at the bottom for the facing because they're a bit more similar in terms of their weight 
and properties but I think there was a bit of laziness because I would have needed to interface the rayon. It was, it was a lot. Whereas this cotton is so structured and sturdy and it has a built-in grid since it's gingham. So I just like cut along the lines and it works. I love them. It's fully lined um, or like lined up until the knee and I'm really happy with it. I made it and it was really tight. So I think in last week's Friday Sews, I mentioned to you that it was super tight. And then I unpicked <laughs> one of the pleats in the front. And then it was too loose, of course, because that gave me like four inches that I didn't, I didn't need all of that. So I just went back in and just made a more shallow pleat. So I think all in all, this pleat is maybe five eighths of an inch or so. So maybe all I needed was of an inch which is three-fourths of an inch <laughs> three-fourths of an inch so maybe just about an inch is what I needed so I am going to consider either transferring some of this information to the actual pattern piece so that I don't end up making the same sort of mistake again and that could just be sort of widening the um, pant leg on the sides by like three-eighths of an inch on both sides um, and that could be a good solution. I also believe that I need to add more, like extend the um, crotch curve a little bit because I need some space for the back. Yeah. But other than that, look at how cool. They are just so freaking cool. When I actually finish making them, I have the um, rectangle top in my sewing room. So I just like put them on together and it looks so good together i didn't want to get too comfortable because i did already state that i will most likely be giving this to my sister and i didn't want to start reconsidering but like the reconsidering started so i don't know i don't know i might have to just add some uh add some fabric to the very top so that it's not as wide and gapy that's one of the reasons why i didn't want to keep it but like they go together so so well like so well because it picks up all of that beautiful red that's in the trousers oh, i love them um i love it so much so 1069 definitely going to become hopefully a staple in my wardrobe and i can't wait to make another one so next up something that i just wanted to say quickly with me made may it has been encouraging me of course to wear more me made items and i finally got to wear my new look skirt and i'll pop up the name of this pattern up on the screen i put it back in my like the rest of my pattern stash but i was really hard on myself last month when i made this i think i was in a funk and there was some issues with the pleating as far as like getting it to be even all the way around and I felt like this section right here was lackluster in its pleat and there was so much more as far as uh, sorry I keep saying pleating gathers so the gathers here were so much denser than they were in this particular spot and of course when we're making something in the process of doing it we have our eyes sort of locked into all of these mistakes and you know like ways that we could have done it differently however when I wore this skirt put on my chunky sweater I you couldn't tell me anything like the skirt was cute I actually enjoyed wearing it I liked it I loved the fit of it and I had to look for the section that the gathers were not as dense the fact that I had to search for it let me know that it wasn't that in your face and it's okay and I had never actually gone in to attach the lining of the yoke uh, to the to that first tier to actually, you know, like tie up all the loose ends and complete it because I was for sure going to go back in and fix that section. A little part of me still might go back in and fix that section, but I'm saying all this just to say that even if I didn't, this skirt is done. It was wearable. I wore it and I could hardly even notice that little blemish that was so glaring to me when I was making it. And sometimes all we need is just to walk away from the project and revisit it with new eyes and you might be surprised how you actually feel about it. So really, really excited that I got to wear this and that Me Made May is encouraging me to wear some of the items that I've made and just need a little bit of love or another go. As far as what's next, I am, I really think it's time. 
I think it's time that this gorgeous floral fabric gets its time to shine. I have settled on making a shirt dress and I think it's going to be like a, a hack situation mainly because I only have two and a half yards of this fabric. I did go on Mood Fabrics online to see if they had any more of this gorgeous cotton voile. It was from the like clearance sale section. So when I went to go and look at it, there was only a yard and a half of it. No, I don't I don't think it was in the clearance section. I think that's the issue. Um, there was only a yard and a half of it. A yard and a half. I went and put it in my cart. I didn't want to I think you have to purchase like a hundred dollars or 150 bucks in order to get free shipping. And I was like, I'm not even going to begin that race because I'm not gonna win. And with shipping for just that one and a half yards of this fabric, it was like 30 bucks. No, 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 I'm not gonna do that. So um, it was fine. I am going to use my two and a half yards of fabric and try and make a shirt dress out of it. As I was looking through my stash to see different things that I could use. I'm considering Simplicity 8546. I'm really excited about this. And it's so simple and that's why I think I like it. I do want there to be some sort of tear moment, like I want it to have a full gathered bottom. And I don't know how that would look with this without like a waist seam. I don't know. I'm going to see if I want to stick with this and sort of hack it in a way to make it do what I want it to do or look the way I want it to look. But it is a great starting point and I think if I have this cut out I can then sort of utilize it for a ton of other makes in the future and sometimes for me cutting out the pattern itself is a really big step. <laughs> Speaking of which another pattern that I recently cut out from my Make 9 is McCall's 7925. Now I was not aware of how many pieces this pattern has. There are so many pieces. There are so many pieces <laughs> in this. And um, had I known that I might have had other feelings about adding it to my Make 9, but I'm so happy that last night when I didn't have any more like sewing mental capacity Friday night, I thought to myself, you know what I could do is cut out a pattern. Like I could do that. I also recognized that I bought the larger size range, so from 14 to a 22. And I think I did that because maybe looking at the back, thinking about the um, waist, sorry, the hip measurement. However, I often grade out at the hips and use the smaller size range because what I really want to fit is the bodice. So I can imagine that I might have some, some editing to do with this pattern so that it fits the way that I would want it to fit. Because I think for the finished garment measurements for the smallest size in this pack, the size 14, the finished garment measurements for the bust line is 39 and a half inches. I think my bust is about 32, 34, maybe let's say 33 inches. Let's say that. Um, so that would be like six, six inches of ease. And I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> That's a lot of ease for me. I typically cut out a size 12 usually and um, for simplicity at least, but for McCall's, I don't, I guess I don't use it as much. But anyways, a size 12 here uh, for the finished garment measurements at the bust line is a 37 and a half. Yeah, I, I'm usually comfortable with about two to three yards. yards about two to three inches of ease, particularly at the bust. I think in this sort of garment, I would want it to fit. While I do know it has a lot of gathers coming from the um, neckline, because this doesn't have darts, that's how you're gonna get the shaping. I have a really small bust. I don't need a lot of shaping, so sometimes I need less ease. Otherwise, it just looks big on me. All right, so I am going to have to work with this, figure it out, because it does have um it has the like midriff panel and then it also has the whole neckline situation which those are multiple pieces so if I did anything to kind of bring in the bodice I would have to make those same alterations to the neckband 
which is not something I necessarily want to figure out. Luckily for me, though, this is not on the docket. It's not something I need to scratch my head about right now. But when I do go to do this pattern, I might have to consider that. McCall's is also on sale right now, I think like this weekend. So if I'm really feeling like it, I might have to buy it again in the smaller size range, which I never do. And I don't want to make a habit of. This is not who I am. <laughs> But if I need to do it, I might consider it because I, I think for the neck band, it's just, it's a lot to figure out the curves of certain things. We'll see. Another reason why I took out the Simplicity 8546 out of my stash is because I do need to really solidify what pattern I want to use when I start working on the Zimmerman dress, which will be on the docket after I finish the floral mood fabric shirt dress. But you would be proud of me. I started doing some math in my handy dandy notebook. And as you all know, when I start doing math, it gets real. And that means we're about to make magic, which we are. So the first thing that I needed to start figuring out was the width, the length, the length, the length of fabric I would need for each of the tiers of this Zimmerman inspired dress. I have sort of settled on the fact that each of the, I'm going to call them rows or tiers. So each of the layers or tiers is going to be about seven inches wide finished garment measurement. So I might be cutting them at about eight inches wide and then calculate or account for about half an inch for seam allowance instead of five eighths like half an inch for seam allowance and then just cut it eight inches wide okay there are going to be eight layers or eight tiers of this dress so eight different colors I've been playing with the linens that I have in my stash trying to work out which colors I have that really do fit the Zimmerman inspired dress palette exactly and which things I'm having to substitute or you know make amends and things like that because these are primarily thrifted and or um found linens lower cost right so either from the two dollars and 97 cent section at g street fabrics or thrifted or things that I already had in my stash from my runs to Joanne moons ago so that's what I'm using and that is the goal and has been, which is why I'm not just exactly color matching to a T to the Zimmerman dress because I'm going based off of what I have in my stash. So there are going to be some substitutions. The really nice thing about having done the math is that I'm starting to recognize where I don't have enough fabric for some of the colors based on how long that piece of fabric needs to be to gather in. Um, I am going to be doing one and a half times the length of each previous tier. That's how gathered I want it to be. One and a half times the previous tier, which means by the time you get to layer eight by the ankle, that's a lot of fabric. It's a lot of fabric. So I'm going to start with the um, third tier. That is going to be the first place where I start gathering. And considering that I keep my fabrics in this order which is not necessarily guaranteed but for now let's just say these were the fabrics i would have these two would not be gathered just yet because when i look at the zimmerman dress uh, they don't start gathering until the third tier so this would be the first gathered tier and it would be one and a half times the length of the orange and then so on and so forth so by the time i get to the very bottom that's going to be a lot to be exact it should be roughly 387 inches long. That's a lot of fabric. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy this is not like a circular item and that it's just straight cuts because hemming that would not be pleasant. And for those of you who are like 387 inches, like what does that mean? If you consider the fact that 36 inches is a yard, that is more than 10 yards lengthwise of gathered fabric at the bottom of this. So it's going to be big, which then brought me to the really sad conclusion that unfortunately I will not be able to have this striking 
Kelly Green fabric as the bottom layer, which if you look at the Zimmerman inspired dress, their last layer is very similar to this really deep green color. And unfortunately I can't because the, the longest I could get this fabric to span at, again, eight inches width, um, the longest I could get that to go is 216 inches. So it's not going to make the 387 that I need for that bottom layer. So I need to find another um, section of the dress to put this in and then go through my and then go through my stash of the linens. For example, I have a ton of this lavender color one, so I could absolutely use this. However, I don't I didn't necessarily want to end with a light color. I wanted to end with a bold color. So I could also do this orange at the very bottom furthest away from my face since they don't want me in orange anyways, as my color analysis identified. Um, and I definitely have enough of this and would never necessarily need to use this. Like if I never make another garment with this again, I would be fine. I would be absolutely okay. So if I could utilize it then as that bottom layer and just use as much of it as possible and get rid of the rest of it, like I would be okay with that. So yeah, lots to think about, but beginning to do the math is very helpful. It also has confirmed that I absolutely do not have enough rickrack. And I don't know how much rickrack I'm gonna have to find in the world to finish this as a mostly thrifted make uh which um you know it's making me a little bit uneasy but better i know it now and also making the actual dress like the foundation of this is the most important thing right now so i can absolutely make the dress and never put the rickrack on or just put what i can and so long as i know that the dress is inspired by not a duplicate of the zimmerman inspired dress then i can sleep happy at night and it's gonna be okay but look at it just it's been fun also like playing around with the colors and just trying to get them to seem balanced and cool and fresh and interesting. And it gives me a lot of appreciation for all designers out there because there is a color story that happens with a lot of the things that they do. And we look at things that shouldn't work and they do. And you can't quite figure out like why, why does that work when they do it? <laughs> So as I'm here trying to play with the colors that I already have and make them work, it's been interesting to see like I squint my eye, I tilt my head and I'm trying to like make sense. Like, does it go? Does it make sense to, you know, <laughs> like how the colors are playing off of each other. So that's been fun too. Do I have anything else to say? I would really like to find an excuse to wear this this week. And I need to just know if it's going to stay in my wardrobe or if I just give it away and stop looking at it and add the buttons to the back and to the sleeve cuff and give it to somebody else who will wear this. But um, this was a make that truly has allowed me to, to examine my relationship with my favorite fabrics and how you can have a favorite fabric and sometimes they don't quite work out and then you end up having to give it away anyways. So it's just really made me examine how attached I can get to certain fabrics. Um, but yeah, I hope I can make it work. I hope maybe when I wear it and style it in an actually uh, meaningful way to work that maybe I can see potential in it and want to keep it. But yeah, I think now it's it's now like I have to I have to put this in the rotation at some point. Um, but yeah, that is going to be a goal of mine for this week. All right. And because it seems like we all love a good exit ticket moment, your exit ticket this week, in light of my recent Simplicity 1069 make, I want to know, have you ever made a seemingly or supposedly really simple make and either the fabric choice, maybe an alteration that you wanted to do to it or had to do to it, or a hack that you wanted to test out, ended up making a very simple and easy project 10 times harder for no reason at all. <laughs> That's what I felt like I did with these culottes. Like this should have been a cut out one night, sew it up the next day sort of make. And it ended up dragging out to be like a three night or a four night event. 
and it didn't need to be. <laughs> and I was just like, why did I overcomplicate that? Picking the wrong size, you know, trying to line something that's meant to be unlined and so many different things. It's hilarious, but I'm so proud of the make. It just, the journey to get there, I was like, it didn't need to be that hard. That didn't need to be that hard. Let me know if you have an experience like that. Otherwise, let me know if there's a make. How did this shirt blouse turn out? Um, I'm not gonna like rave like this is the best thing I've ever made, but the fact that it is a wearable garment when it started off as this like origami cut hacked piece of fabric feels like magic. It feels like joy and I'm really excited about that. Let me know how your sewing is going this week and I hope to see you next time. Until then, my friends, stay creative. Bye-bye.